Baker's job. Thanks. Ed Emery from Missouri. Uh, really am encouraged just by the, the thinking that I'm, that I'm hearing from the, the panel and the innovative thought. Uh, you know, a couple of comments, I guess. One, I think some of the questions serve as indictments of the current system. Uh, the question about the textbooks, I think, is a reflection that, that today we don't teach students how to think, we tell them what to think. And, and what we tell them to think when they're, when they're freshmen is out of date, you know, when they're seniors. But if we teach them how to think when they're freshmen, that's still current. Uh, and I, so I think that in itself is an indictment. I think the question about the, the private, the impacts on private schools, again, you know, private schools do not look at themselves as monopolies. Uh, they don't consider that they have to protect their clientele. Usually they're there because people demand uh, an alternative. And so um, they are typically innovators already and are happy to jump on board with anything that helps them focus on the student as opposed to the institution. I guess the question that, that I have, and, and it comes from uh, from Mr. Mo, I can't remember your first name now. <laughs> uh, Terry, is it Terry? Terry. Terry. Uh, was a comment about that we need to, we need accountability and we need accreditation. Um, it seems to me that the accountability and the accreditation emphasis that we have today, in fact, protects the system that we have today. And I'm wondering, okay, so who is this that's going to hold these institutions accountable, and who's who's going to issue the accreditation so that we don't just simply reproduce the failures that we already have? Well, I think Susan could talk about the accreditation part because there is an uh, accrediting agency out there. It's not an agency of government, right? So uh, this is one solution to the accreditation problem and a lot of these schools are getting accredited, right, uh, in, in this way. Uh, on the accountability side, I think to a large extent it's a concession to reality uh, on my part. I, I am not a big regulator, believe me. Um, but I think that you have to be practical about this and it, if governments are going to be providing money to schools they are going to be demanding, uh, in part because citizens will demand accountability. Right? These, some schools are going to be bad. Some schools are going to do really bad things with the money. Right? This is ju it's just in any market, this is going to happen. There are going to be some percentage right, that are bad. Uh, and so there has to be some mechanism. Like, for instance, with accountability for performance, it's just a matter of having kids take tests. You know, which the charter school kids have to do anyway, right? This, this is not a big deal. I, I think most schools would be fine with that. Um, and when it comes to spending money, I think there has to be some kind of audit or reporting requirement so that we make sure that all schools are on the up and up. And this is a way of safeguarding the whole system. And I, I think the rules need to be minimal and basic, but there need to be some rules or these things won't get passed. All right, you know, you're putting me on the spot because I, you know, I mean, I'm basically a uh, accountability from below kind of guy, you know. I, I, I've always argued that, that that's, the, that's the real way, you know, to hold schools accountable. But in politics, it's not. I mean, I, I think it's, it's not a winner. I, it, it's not a way to get this thing. If you insist on that, then it will prevent these systems from getting adopted. There has to be, like for instance, um, requiring kids in virtual charters to take tests is in my view not onerous. Um, they're taking tests anyway all the time. Fine, they should take tests to show that they're learning what the state says they should be learning. This is not an onerous requirement, right? So that's the accountability mechanism, right? I don't think that's a problem. And if we don't have something like that, it just won't get adopted. On the accreditation um, piece, our, our nonprofit has worked to just publish national standards of quality for online programs. We work with three of the six regional accrediting agencies, and there's also CITA, which is CITA, which is a accrediting group that focuses on distance learning and online programs. All of those groups are working to adopt those standards, and hopefully they'll start using those standards across the board so we don't create it 
We need a level playing field for face-to-face -face and online that focuses on outputs and performance and not on inputs the way the current system does accreditation. I'm Representative Fred Rahm coming from South Dakota. Could you describe the data that shows that the students are performing better? Is there such data out there? There is, and we have a, a publication that's a research um, of effectiveness of K-12 online learning. It's a literature review. Um, there's data that shows that the AP test scores, Florida Virtual School in particular, um, their students that take online AP courses are outperforming on the end of course the AP exam. The traditional students, the student population is um, more, they're more minority students and underserved students taking the online test. Um, the online AP classes in Florida because they're trying to reach the kids that don't already have access to them in their schools. So they're serving a underserved population and the kids are outperforming the traditional schools on the AP exams. There were two studies that were um, quasi-experimental design done in West Virginia of online Spanish that showed that those students outperformed traditional students. And they were doing a lot of peer-to-peer -peer online voice over IP practicing with students from other communities. And so that that peer-to-peer -peer and the engagement piece where students are not competing but interacting with each other a lot is bringing the performance level out. The other indicator from the research is showing, one, the teachers that want to go teach in virtual schools want to be challenged. They love teaching. They want to be in a different environment and they want to let the kids move forward. So it's a combination of quality teaching, student engagement, and more rigorous curriculum that the, the end of course exams and student performance uh, are higher. And that whole literature review is in a document that's free on our website. Uh, let me just add that I, this may be the document you're talking about, but on the NCES website, National Center for Education Statistics, um, they have posted a study which is a meta-analysis of more than a thousand studies that have been carried out comparing online learning to classroom learning. And the bottom line from those thousand some studies is that online students do at least as well as students in in-class settings. And I, I just wanted to add one last thing. Um, I, I work with an uh, organization that works with full-time virtual schools around the country, and the students in those schools take the state standardized test, just like other kids. And the test results that are coming out of those are starting to show that, in fact, they are outscoring the state averages, um, which is exa exactly what we would expect when we look at personalization, high-quality teaching, and high-quality curriculum. So. Hello. Uh, my name is Lee Finn. I'm from Seattle, Washington, Washington Policy Center. We have a bill that was passed in the last session that uh, provides a, uh, a pretty good uh, accountability um, uh, system for online schools because the students are required to take the state allows principals to waive many of the laws that get in the way of innovation, and this is a perfect model for mm -hmm. moving innovation schools, uh, online schools forward. Look at that bill. That's an excellent model. Puts a principal in charge. They can hire non-credentialed teachers. They can use curriculum that they choose. It is, it is a, another model that legislators can look at. 